Welcome back to this channel. Watch to the end for channel shout out. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, Pasta Mrs. Chloe Abraham. Hey, Sandra my dear sister, how are you? I'm very fine. How are you and Pasta doing? We are doing fine, thanks to God. And your children. They are fine too, it's so nice to hear from you. Thank you. How is Israel? Israel is so fine. It's really a beautiful country. And my father's family has been so welcoming to me and the children. We are trying to know about each other as much we can. My father is busy lavishing me and his grandchildren with love and care. He is trying to make up for all the time we lost. Wow, good to hear that. What of Joan my beautiful friend? Joan is fine. She sent her greetings. I am so happy for you, all thanks to our faithful God who keeps promises to make all things beautiful in his time. Mummy will be happy to hear your voice. She is in her room, please hold on let me give the phone to her. No Chloe, please stop that. What? I am still not ready to speak with that evil woman who deprived me of all I should have been enjoying with my family, if not for her my life would have been so much different. Sandra, I'm surprised you are still nursing a grudge against your mother. No, I'm not holding any grudge against her, she should just let me be. Of course you do, otherwise you would have been more than happy to speak with her, whatever she did to you, she is still your mother, you will block your own blessings if you fail to forgive. Sandra please, forgive her. Forgive the ugly past and embrace your beautiful future. I don't think I will ever be able to forget, let alone forgive her. My blood boils whenever I think of all that she did to me. I personally cannot see any quality of redemption in her. I even wonder how she won you people over so easily. Anyway, one day her real colors will come out for you all to see. Look, let's drop that woman's matter on a better note. I have been attending the church my father's family goes to. The pastor has been very helpful. He is counseling me and the children. By God's grace we shall all recover from our different trauma very soon. I say amen to that, but remember we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, all our righteousness are like filthy rags before our holy God, life is full of trials and tribulations and we all have our shares in different shapes and sizes, and at different times and seasons. What is more important is how we recover from them and whose voice and ways we are following, Sandra remember God should always be the only one that matters. Thank you Chloe. Please greet Pasta and the children for me. I will, please do same to your people over there, bye. Pasta Chloe. My sister please I am sorry for keeping you waiting. That's alright. Thanks for your patience, that was Sandra, my sister in love. It seems everything is working out very well for you and your family, despite all that happened to you these past years. It is God's mercy. I think it's high time I change my name to Chloe so that I can also swim in the ocean of God's mercy like you. On a serious note, Chloe I would never have imagined that despite all that happened to you, you can still be having such a cordial conversation with the very woman who was out to destroy you in your home. Well, my sister, that is God for you, he made it all possible, he alone is the author and finisher, I believe his word that says that he makes all things work together for good, for those who love God and who are called to his purpose. He has really made things beautiful in his time. My sister, I rejoice with you. You have your husband, his mother, who is also your mother-in-law. You also have your husband's sister, your sister-in-law, indeed wonders will never end. You see, there is nothing that God cannot do, you just have to believe and trust him, well it may take time, but God will always make crooked paths straight. I know what you are saying and I believe God is a miracle working God but I don't know whether God can help me in the predicament that I find myself in. What is it? This one is too hard. Nothing is too hard for God. Chloe, you don't understand. Even if I do not understand, God is omniscient, he is all-knowing, he is waiting for you to lay whatever it is at his feet, he says in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. My sister, you don't understand. I never expected you to listen to me again, after the bad advice that I gave to you when you were facing your own predicament many years ago. Linda, that is now in the past and it is already buried, we are in a new day and a new season, please feel free to share your concern with me, we will rely not on our own wisdom, but on the wisdom that only the Holy Spirit can give. 
Chloe, my dear daughter, I did not know that you have a visitor. Mummy, please meet my friend, Pastor Linda. She and her husband pastor the Christ the Alpha Christian Assembly. We have been friends for many years. You are welcome. Thank you, Ma. It's nice meeting you, Ma. Thank you, my daughter. Chloe, I have been looking for Precious. I sent her to call the maid for me but she has since disappeared and I can't find her. Mum, you know Precious is easily distracted. She could be outside playing or in her room unlocking word puzzles on her tab. What do you need the maid for? I need her to help me with the dress I will be wearing to the occasion. So early. The event is taking place tomorrow and we still have many hours to do all that. Many hours. The sun will soon go down and the day will end. Before we know it tomorrow would have come. Besides, we are talking about my first grandson's graduation here, and I know Precious himself will be happy seeing me, his one and only grandma, well dressed for the occasion. Okay, I will get the maid for you. Pastor Linda, please excuse me. Ma, you are such a blessed woman. I congratulate you on the reconciliation with your son. Thank you. Honestly, I never thought that I could see my son again, but thank God I'm here with him and his family. I've invited her. She will join you very soon. Thank you. My daughter, please enjoy your stay. Thank you, Ma. Linda, please go on with what you were about to say. Linda, I came here to share my problem with you, because I know you to be a fine Christian and also the wife of a minister of the gospel yourself. I came here to be counseled. Of course, that's what I'm doing. No, you are making me feel terrible. I'm sorry if I'm making you feel terrible, Chloe. I'm only being frank with you. You said your husband has a secret wife out of town and the strange woman has a child for him. And all you could do is to pray. No, a man like that does not deserve an iota of respect. You have to embarrass him, slam a divorce on him. No, I can't do that. God hates divorce. Not in this case, friend. I'm also a Christian. I won't mislead you. That man has no respect for you. A man that could go to that extent can kill you. Chloe wake up, divorce him. I know you must have been wondering why I, a pastor's wife would give you, another pastor's wife, that type of advice, well I did so because I know how dangerous the other woman your husband was seeing could be, this is because I was at one time the other woman in my husband's life and I knew how desperate and dangerous I was. You mean you, I was his side chick when both of us were unbelievers and lived together in the same city. It was the day I told him I was pregnant for him that he revealed to me what I never knew about him. What did you just say? I said you have to abort the pregnancy. Abort? Why? What I'm carrying is not an unwanted pregnancy to you. It is unwanted because I don't want any more babies. Any more babies? Brown, what are you saying? For crying out loud this is going to be our first baby. Well, I think it's high time I told you the truth. I already have three children, and I'm not interested in having any more. Brown wake up. I think the drink you took at the club is already having an effect on you. I'm not drunk. Then, which three children are you talking about? I am married to a beautiful lady who has three precious children for me. You are married. I'm sorry, I didn't know how to tell you this all along. I didn't know you will be so careless to allow yourself get pregnant. I'm afraid. Linda you just have to terminate the pregnancy, if you choose to keep it, the ball is in your court, as things stands now, the relationship between us has ended today, please get out of my car. To where? Linda, please get out of my car. Please, to where? Brown stopped seeing me, he stopped picking my calls or responding to my text messages, he later blocked my phone number, I was devastated, when my mother heard of what happened she was also shocked because she knew Brown very well and all along. She believed I was in a real relationship with a responsible bachelor. My mother insisted that we went to Brown's house to meet his wife. I managed to get his home address through one of his colleagues at work. On a set day, we successfully located the house. That was the first time I would step inside his matrimonial home. Before then, he used to take me to the staff quarters of the company where he worked. He made me believe that was his place of residence. I never knew he has a beautiful bungalow where he lived with his wife and children. The wife was shocked. I was more shocked when she refused to move out of her matrimonial home in anger. In fact she insisted that she was prepared to accept me as her husband's second wife, and even raise my child along with her own three children. 
I didn't want any of that as I was not prepared to share a husband with any woman or have my child raised by another woman, so I devised a plan. I understand everything you said, now tell me what exactly you want me to do? I want you to help me push that woman out. No problem, all I need are her full name, photograph and address. I assure you she will be sent out of this world within the next 24 hours. No, I don't want her dead. All I want is for you to send her out of her matrimonial home. Make the husband believe she is seeing another man or something. Oh, you want me to frame her up? We agreed on a fee which I paid without delay. That man was an evil genius. The exact thing he did to make Brown turn his back on his wife still remains a mystery to me till date. Because he refused to reveal the secret to me. All I know is that, whatever he did worked, I got to know a few details as time went on. Now this last straw has just broken the camel's back. I don't need any more evidence to believe you are in a relationship with another man. June, you are a cheat. No I'm not, you know what I can and what I cannot do. I do not know that man from anywhere, please, God is my witness. Leave God out of this. Nothing can change my mind, not even your crocodile tears. Now listen. It's over between the two of us. Go in there. Pack your things and leave this house. Go and meet your lover boy. Please. He forced the woman out of his house. Not long after that, I found a way to work myself back into his life. He was very happy when he heard that I had not terminated the pregnancy. That was how I became his wife. Better put, his second wife because he did not divorce his first wife. I was not comfortable with the woman's three children living with us. So I did everything to plant in my husband, doubts about the paternity of the children. I made him suspect the other man may be their real biological father. He fell for my deceit and sent those children to their mother. A few years into our marriage, on the invitation of one of Brown's colleagues at work, the two of us attended a couple's dinner, where the speaker preached the raw truth, about the need for every man to be saved. Both of us became very sober and got born again that night. Thanks to God for that. We later became pastors. Brown had a rethink and started believing that the three children may indeed be his. He became remorseful over how he had abandoned them, so he decided to pick up his responsibility of educating them. They never came to visit, they preferred to stay with their mother. I can see that you are shocked at what I just told you. Right, but you know I can't judge you. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 warns us not to judge lest we too be judged, now did he make moves to reconcile with their mother? No, he held on to the belief that his wife actually cheated on him. But you know that is not true, more so, after you have given your life to Christ, you should have confessed and told him the truth. I know that is the right thing to do, but I couldn't just bring myself to do it. After seeing how events unfolded in the lives of different members of your family, I've come to realize just how big the Lord is. You are correct, God that can never be deceived and will never let people get away with their sins, a person may think he or she is smarter and has gotten away with some things, but it is a lie as God is omniscient, he knows everything. I believe time has come for me to put my life in order, I can no longer live a stolen life that I hijacked from the first wife, I mean his legal wife. Correct. You have to accept that you have never been married and that your children merely stole the place that rightly belongs to the children of the legal wife. The problem is that I don't know how to approach God, my husband, my children, especially, the woman that I wronged so badly. Pastor Chloe I know you are disappointed in me, but please, do not terminate your friendship with me, I need you to stand with me as I try to make things right with everyone. You still remain my friend, more so, now that you have seen the need to mend your ways, but this situation is beyond what can be solved by human strength and wisdom, it's only the Holy Spirit that can help, you need to consult him so that he can lead you in the best way to approach everyone, we need to pray to him for direction. Thank you. You are welcome dear. You mean you don't want to take anything? My dear, I'm okay, the dinner I ate a little late last night makes me feel bloated, I need to let my tummy rest this morning. Not even a slice of bread. You know the graduation program we are going for may drag into the afternoon and I don't want you to go hungry. Daddy I'm okay, the way you treat me like a baby. You see, you are my baby and I must not allow my baby to go hungry. Okay, my daddy, your baby is okay. In any case, please take a bottle of smoothie and a few crackers along, you may need them. You win, 
Let me get them, and please eat fast. You know Pastor and his family will soon be here. That's true. Sweetheart, we are running late. Papa and his wife must be waiting for us already. I'm set. That's good. What about Precious and his siblings? They're already in the car. Trust the children. They can't wait to hit the road for the graduation. Okay, what of Mum? Let me invite her. No, she was out earlier. She just went in to quickly ease herself. Oh, sweetheart, we have every reason to thank God. You can say that again. I have dreamt of this day, the day we would be celebrating our first son's graduation as a computer engineer. Indeed Precious has made us proud. Yes, thank God for this great achievement. All our efforts and challenges has been worth it. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. My sweet mama, you are looking so good. Thank you. I thank you and pastor for making me look good. Women please, enough of this encomium. Let's go please. They are here already. Pastor, congratulations. I still find it hard to believe that Smith can turn out this way. He doesn't look an inch like someone who lost his job and spent years in prison. Yeah, so it's going to be his turn. He is so eager to graduate. Yes, and Miracle too. Yes. The smile on the face of Miracle alone speaks volume. Look at this one laughing like a spoiled toddler who just got a new toy. Look at how the children are also laughing and talking with her. Meanwhile they hardly play with me, their biological grandmother. This woman is living my husband, my house, my car, my son and grandchildren. No, I won't allow this to continue. Power must change hands. I need to move fast. Where is Mama Petra? She is inside the car. In the car? Yes. Mama Petra. Good morning Ma. Good morning. Congratulations. We thank God. Janet congratulations. Thank you. Let's just thank God for everything. Alright, please let's go. We are almost behind schedule. I want to go with Grandpa. Oh, she wants to go with Grandpa. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm proud of you. My photographer, please come. I think let's start with him alone, first. Okay. Can you just take one more portrait? Very good. Let's take with him. Okay, so let's have Grandpa and his wife. Yes, please come. It will soon be your turn. Let them take first. I hate this woman, but I have no choice. I have to love her or pretend to love her just to get close to her. That is the only way to have an inroad into her life to destroy her and take back what rightly belongs to me. Very good. So please, where is Grandma? Mum please come, you are the graduate's number one cheerleader, please come, this photograph will not be complete without you. So please let's get into the cars quickly, you know we are eating out, we must get to the restaurant as early as possible. Okay let's go. Well done dear. Thanks my dear, is lunch ready? Almost, how far? Well, I'm on the 8th chapter. Good, meaning you have two more to go. Actually, three. God just inspired me to add one more chapter, honestly I don't know the book will be this voluminous. That is God for you, when he is set to speak to a man, inspiration flows like a river flows downhill. You are right, yes, you said you have an important matter to discuss with me, let's talk now. Maybe later. Later again? This is the third time you will be saying later, are you sure the matter can wait? I don't want to disturb the book you are writing. Oh no. Listening to you, my dear wife takes priority. Besides I was just planning to take a break to rest a little when you came in. Please sit let's talk. No, dear please go on with your work. Hello my sister, how are you today? Honestly, I don't understand myself. I concluded the seven days of prayer and fasting yesterday, and I have been trying to face my husband to open the can of worms, but I couldn't. I have tried three times now but I couldn't summon the courage to do so. I know God has forgiven me and he has taken me back into the fold for he is merciful and has promised not to abandon or destroy me, but I am just afraid, I don't know what will happen, I don't know how my husband and children will take the terrible news. Well, regardless of what may happen, it will not be as bad as what you stand to lose if you keep quiet and let the enemy win, walking in the light is always better than walking in darkness. I know, but each time I try to open my mouth to confess, 
It is as if a big lump of stone is blocking my throat. I understand, but you just have to do it. Pastor Chloe, please can I ask a favor of you? Okay, please go on. Can you and your husband help me to talk to my husband and children, as well as the first wife and her children? Hello. Hello Pastor Linda. You are not talking. I was thinking about your request. Please let me discuss with my husband and I will get back to you soon. Thank you Pastor Chloe. I overheard part of your discussion on phone. What is the can of worms you are afraid of opening? What is that confession you cannot make to me? I am your husband. You can tell me anything. I won't kill you. Go on. Tell me what the matter is. I agree with you, sweetheart. It is indeed a very messy situation. Okay, I will call to explain everything to her. I'm sure she will be happy to hear this. Thank you very much. No, mum is still around. Well, I told her the same thing but she insisted. I hope she will agree now that it is coming from you. Okay thanks, bye. Miracles mum. Mama, I can see you are set. Yes, very set. My husband sent me to you. He said I should tell you the same thing I told you earlier today. What? He said he's not comfortable with you going around town in a taxi. He said I should tell good luck to use one of the cars to take you to wherever you are going. I just want to go and visit Smith's wife. I will be back very soon. The two of you should not worry. Mama, let us worry. We care for your comfort and safety. Okay, if you insist. We humbly insist Ma. Let me invite the driver. These children. I must confess, you have really made my day. You have spent well over an hour here, yet it looks like just a few minutes. Thank you very much for the visit Ma. My sister, it's a pleasure. And thanks for the life lessons you shared with me. Thank God for everything, please greet Pa Smith when he returns. Oh, I will do just that. Please greet Pastor and Miracle's mum for me. It's alright, goodbye. Bye. We are not heading home yet. I need to see an old friend in Dartmouth. Do you know the place? Very well Ma. I grew up there, Dartmouth. The place is known for notorious boys and girls. You are right. I used to be one myself. I dropped out of school in primary three. It was pastor and mummy that God sent to deliver me from sin and the life of waywardness. They came to preach in our neighborhood about four years, no I mean five years ago. That was how I surrendered my life to Jesus. They took me away from the slum, cleaned me up, they sent me to the converts class and later employed me as their driver. They treat me more like a son than a driver. I love them and I pray that God will continue to bless them for me. Amen. That's exactly what I want to do in Dartmouth. To go and preach to Cindy. She's an old friend, but yet to know Christ. That's kind of you Ma. God bless you. Amen. I cannot believe this. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Linda? What are you sorry for? You came into my life. You manipulated me against my legally married wife, the mother of my children. You made me send her away only for you to move in. You successfully altered the course of my destiny and destroyed my testimony. Linda, all I get from you now is one useless I am sorry. Just imagine, after causing this terrible havoc, you said it was the Holy Spirit who instructed you to confess? Well I don't blame you. I blame myself for being so gullible to allow a wicked woman like you manipulate me so terribly. Linda you are a devil, a real devil. Please, dear I'm sorry. Terrible woman, that's who you are. I'm sorry, please dear. Mummy we met dad on our way inside, we greeted him but he didn't respond, he looks so strange, he looks angry, mummy what is it? What happened? Mummy please, say something, what happened? Why are you crying? No mum, I cannot believe this. My dear children, that's the truth. But mum, you are a child of God, I mean, you were born again, you are a pastor, how could you have done this terrible thing? It's a long story. Everything happened before your daddy and I met the Lord, we were both unbelievers. No, mummy no. Hello, Pastor Chloe. Hello, what? You are crying. What's the matter? Pastor Linda what's the problem? Well I called to tell you that my husband has agreed to find a way to talk to your husband ahead of you confessing your misdeed to him. I have already confessed everything to him. That's okay? How did it go? Terrible. He took it really badly. He walked out of the house in anger and has since not returned. I don't know what he is up to. What of your children? I told them everything. 
Both of them are also disappointed in me. Hello, good afternoon. I was told you wanted to see me. Yes. Who are you? Julius. You mean you can't recognize this face? Wait. Who is this? Is this not Petra? I'm the one. Petra baby. It's been a while we saw. Girl you have changed. You are now old. Look at who is talking. It's like you have not been looking at yourself in the mirror. You now look older than my grandfather. You are not serious. The good is that your fine face and bias have not changed. Thank you. I'm sure your rough and wicked life have also not changed. You can say that again. I am still the same Julius aka Troublemaker. Please what brought you here? I brought a job for you, and it's serious. Somebody stole something precious from me and I want it back. Grandma did not go with her phone. Hello Ma. Hello Kingsley. Yes Ma. Where is Mama? Sorry Ma, she is not here. She left her bag inside the car. She forgot her phone in it. Where is she? She went to greet her friend. Oh, she's still there. No Ma, it's another friend at Dartmouth. Dartmouth? Which friend? I don't know Ma. Well, when she returns tell her I called just to check on her. Please tell her to call me back. Okay Ma. She is the owner of Stormy International School. Stormy, that big school. Oh, you know the school. Yes, the school is very popular. It is not far from Inland Super Mall along Albert Street. The only problem is that it is located in the ever busy business district. It doesn't make sense to strike her in that area. Where does she live? Number 289, Hibiscus. And when does she go to her school? Every day except on Saturday and Sunday. Good, very good. We will target her from her house and ambush her on her way to the school, only to deposit one or two bullets in her skull, and that's all. Okay, Julius. Petra, you can go right away to compose a fine tribute that you will deliver at her funeral. Thank you, Julius. That's all right. What are old friends for? But I have an idea. Since you said you don't have money to pay us, I feel like you should use one bird to kill two stones. One bird to kill two stones. I mean two stone to kill one bird. Julius, why are you confessing confusion? Use one stone to kill two birds. Whatever. The important thing is that the bird must be killed. This is what we're going to do. We will kidnap her and demand a ransom from her family. And after we collect the ransom, we will still go ahead and kill her. The ransom will take care of our fee. And killing her will take care of your request. Is that okay? It's alright. However, if she proves too difficult during the kidnap, we will kill her there and then, right away. Okay, I hope nothing will be traced to me. Have you forgotten my other nickname? Julius, Snake on the Rock, when I pass, I don't leave traces. I trust you, when exactly are you doing the job? The boys who are to join me with the assignment have other operations at the moment. It will take them till Sunday, so yours will be done Monday or Tuesday. Since you said that it is her staff who opens the school every day, that means she has no regular time of going to the school, isn't it? Exactly. That means you'll help us to monitor her movement within these two days and report to us. Moreover don't forget to send her photo to my phone for me to confirm the face. I will do that immediately I get into the car. No Pastor Linda, you have no reason to regret confessing your sins. But everyone has turned against me, my husband. My children, you won't believe it. I called my husband's first wife to go and see her and her children. My intention was to go and confess to her and beg for her forgiveness too. She told me she was not interested in seeing me. She said my husband had already called her and told her everything I did. Now everyone has turned against me. Everybody except Almighty. God is always pleased with every remorseful sinner who begs for forgiveness. So pull yourself together. Go back to the place of prayer and pour out your heart to him. He will beam his light on your path and show you what to do. Thank you, Pastor Chloe. I'm sorry, Pastor Chloe. He's back. Who? My husband. He just walked into the compound now. We will talk later. Welcome, dear. Mummy, hope you enjoyed your meal. Very well. Thanks for the care. Thanks to God. Sorry, Ma. Can I take a little of your time? With all pleasure. You can take as much as you want. Thank you, Ma. You're welcome. I need your opinion on a matter. What is that? 
There is this woman who manipulated her way into the life of a man and snatched him from his wife, what can we call that woman? Woman? Who is the woman? A friend. Are you sure it's a friend that we're talking about here, not another person? Sure, she's a friend, what can you say about what she did? Very wrong. The good news is the woman has since surrendered her life to Jesus, she was remorseful and she confessed to her husband, her children and the legal wife. She tried. The sad news is that the husband is seriously annoyed. The man has the right to be, what the woman did is bad, better put, what she did is evil. Now, going forward, what can she do? Does she have children for the man? Two. It's a difficult one. Well, I believe having children or not does not really matter to her. The right thing to do is to leave the man for the rightful owner, otherwise she will be using her bare hands to fetch burning coals on her head. This is serious. I will find a way to talk to her, thank you mama. Thank you. I hope this woman is not using parable to speak to me. My dear please, please don't leave me alone, where are you going now? Dear I'm sorry, dear please don't go, I'm sorry. Mama, you're welcome. Thank you my love. So how did it go? Oh, I had a very wonderful time with my good friend, Mama Petra today, I accompanied her to the salon to make her hair. From there we went to do some shopping, she's such a pleasant person to be with, I like her. Well, that is good, but please be very watchful and prayerful when it comes to Petra. I don't know why, I'm just not fully convinced that she's truly born again. I don't want her to hurt you the way she did to me some years back. Dear, are sure you're still not nursing some bitterness against the innocent woman? No, but I'm just being careful, remember in Matthew chapter 10 verses 16. The Bible tells us to be as wise as serpents, and as harmless as doves. That's true, you see, sincerely, from time to time I do have a check in my spirit to be careful with her, but I always wave it off as a baseless suspicion. Actually it may be baseless, and on the other hand, it may not be, what we just need to do is to continue to watch and pray. The Lord will help me. Dear, have you had your lunch? Which lunch? The lunch that has already disappeared in my tummy, my stomach is already warming up for dinner. Daddy, you and food. Should I come and join you in the kitchen? Yes, you are welcome. Okay. Father show me the way to go, Lord, let me, guide me, I need you Lord to touch my husband's heart, touch his heart, touch the heart of grace, let her forgive me, I need your mercy, show me the way, direct me, guide me Lord, I need you. Come into my home, come and have your way in this home, come and take your place. Lord it is time, come Lord, show me the way, Father I need you. I am sensing something is not right with the friendship between mom and your stepmom. How? What did you notice? Nothing specific, I am just sensing it. Well, I believe you're correct. I've also been having reasons to doubt mom's salvation for a while. Why? But you led her to Christ. By their fruits, you shall know them, so says the Bible. Some of mum's words and actions leave room for one to doubt her encounter. Do you remember the last time she received a call and told the caller that she was about entering the church auditorium, while she was right there with us in the living room? Remember, I corrected her but she told me it was a small white lie. Well, it is only God who knows her true spiritual state. Exactly. And that's why we need to call upon the Lord for a definite encounter to break her down and turn her stony heart to flesh. Thereafter we will preach the gospel to her again. That's a good one. Okay, let's pray for her now. Hello Ma. Hello. Esther my sister how is Daddy? Daddy is fine. I hope Pastor and the family are also fine. We thank God. I need to see you this morning. I need your advice concerning an urgent matter, when can I meet you, at home? I'm sorry, you can't meet me at home this morning, I have to be in school a little earlier today, I have an appointment with a team from the Ministry of Education. In that case, can I come and meet you in the school? Oh, no problem with that. When exactly are you leaving home? Within the next one hour. That means around 9 a.m. In that case I should be in your school before noon, thank you. You are welcome Ma, bye Ma. Who was that? Mama Petra. What does she want? She said she needed to see me for an advice. Advice? 
Hello. Hello, Julius. I just spoke with that woman. She will be heading for her school any time between now and 9 a.m. That's okay. My boys are fully ready. They will hit the road right away. Thank you. But please do not forget. I don't want anything traced to me. Madam, relax. Now cut the line and expect good news from us very soon. Amen. Thank you. Dear. You are set. Yes, I'm set. But I don't know how I'm feeling. How? Are you sick? No, I'm just feeling uncomfortable. About what? I don't know. Could it be about your upcoming meeting with officials from the Ministry of Education? No, this is not going to be their first visit. Besides our school is in a very good standing with the Ministry. I guess it is your upcoming meeting with Petra. Honestly, I don't know. I know, because the Holy Spirit has been telling me that we must be careful with Petra. Well since we cannot pinpoint anything definite. Let's take a moment to pray for your outing today, and we must also remember to commit Petra to the hands of God, that the Lord God will right whatever is wrong in her spiritual life, let us pray. Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's commit this your going out to the hands of God. Adams, she must not smell us, you keep the distance between us at 100 meters, maximum and 50 minimum, did you get that? Yes boss. No mistake, no error. What did I say? No mistake, no error. Fire this engine. It's already past nine. I hope these people are doing the job. I need to find out from Julius. Petra, people are busy interceding for your genuine repentance and total surrender, but you are busy plotting to destroy a woman who loves you sincerely and supports you in every possible way. For how long will you continue to let the devil use you? How many lives will you destroy before you stop doing evil? Do you want to throw away all that you have been blessed to get back? It's not easy for Smith and his wife to forgive and embrace you, but they did so because of their acknowledgement that Jesus is all that matters. You have been set free, but now you are ready to go back to your life of being a captive to sin. How many times will I call on you before you answer me? The time has come and is here now for you to let go of your evil ways and come to the saving grace that you can only get from serving the one who is the way the truth and the life. It is time to choose between darkness and light, death and life. I urge you, choose life. Mummy, what is it? What happened? What is the matter? Sweetheart, Mummy what is the matter? What's going on here? It's Mummy, she's been crying. My wife, Pastor, there is trouble. Which trouble? Just help me to pray that those evil people do not lay their hands on that woman. Which evil people? Which woman? It is Esther, Smith's wife, I will confess. The number you dialed is switched off, please try again later. Oh, switched off, why? What could be wrong with her phone? It was fully charged before she left the house this morning. Mummy why? Why did you allow Envy to push you to take another woman's life? No, I am disappointed, I am really disappointed. Please let me call them. Let me call them not to carry out the operation. What is it not ringing? It's ringing. They are not picking the calls. What's all these? How are we sure they have not laid their hands on Mama Esther already? Sweetheart, I think we should just call to tell her that she should drive into the nearest police station or a shopping mall or any other busy places. Switched off. I'm in trouble. Let's just pray the worst has not happened to Mama Esther. Our best now is to go to Papa's house and let him know what is going on. Her phone is still saying switched off. I had earlier called the principal of the school, and the man said my wife had not reported to work today. Petra, you have finished me. When you manipulated figures in the office and got me imprisoned years ago, I thought you had done your worst. When I came out of the prison and I discovered that you had dumped me and vanished into thin air, I thought you had done your worst, Petra you have finished me. How wrong I've been, I never knew you still have many evils up your sleeves, Petra, now you have mastermind the assassination of my dear wife Esther, now you've finished me. Father don't do this, two wrongs don't make a right, let us call and report this matter to the police. Call the police, to come and do what? To come and bring back to life my wife that this evil woman killed. Police to come and do what? But sir, 
Reporting to the police is still the normal thing to do. Please calm down. What is happening here? Why is every one of you looking at me as if I'm a ghost? Thank you, Jesus. My dear, I hope you're okay. I hope they did not harm you. They did not hurt you. Hurt me? Who? Petra and her people. Mama, we agreed to meet in my school later in the day. I'm surprised to see you here. Surprised? You are not surprised. You will really be surprised and shocked if you know the evil plan this evil woman has for you. Hello, Pastor Linda. Hello, Pastor Chloe. Is there any update? Have you heard from him? No, I called him several times last night but he did not pick any of my calls. Maybe he's still hurt. I resumed trying again this morning but the calls are no longer going through. I think he has blocked my number. His phone might have flat battery. I am just afraid. I hope he has not done something terrible to himself. God forbid that. My sis please put your mind at rest. God will settle everything. I'm so sorry. We are in the middle of a family meeting. I excused myself to quickly receive your call. I will get back to you later. Thank you. Mama, you want to take my life. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. What did I do to deserve this much evil from you? My dear, let's just thank God for delivering you from the snare of the fowler. Indeed it was God who delivered me. How he did it remains a mystery, because I never knew any evil was lurking in the corner. Now my dear, what happened to your phone? I've been calling you and it has been saying switched off. My dear that is another mystery. It was when I got to school that I discovered that my phone had stopped working. I did everything I knew to make it work, but it refused to come on. But you should have used the phone of one of your workers to call me. I'm ashamed to say that I don't know your number offhand. That's a lesson for all married couples. It is very important we know our spouse's numbers, in case of emergencies like this. You are correct, that is right. That is why I came home so early to pick my spare phone because I know you will be worried if you cannot reach me throughout the day. But I called the principal earlier today, he didn't tell you. The principal? Oh, he left the school before I arrived, he went to the bank. It is those people. Who? Those I sent to kill. Hello Petra, it's me Julius. I called to inform that the woman's head is strong. We trailed her car all the way from her house to the junction where the traffic light allowed her car to pass, but flashed yellow and then red before our car could pass. We tried to beat the traffic light, but just then a minivan that was passed by the green light came from the other side and hit her car. It was a minor accident, but it delayed us for about 30 minutes. By the time the matter was resolved, the woman had escaped. Well nothing spoil, we will make it another day. You have to monitor her again like you did today and get us necessary informations about her movement for us to strike. I assure you, her days on earth are numbered. Hello, Petra baby. Hello. Did you hear what I said? I will call you back later. How did I become a toy in the hands of a strange woman? Why did I allow myself to be so easily deceived? God where do I go from here? What will happen to me? My legal wife and my children? What will become of my Christian testimony and my ministry? What? So many questions but not a single answer. Holy Spirit, what is happening to me? Petra, you are wicked. I will tell you what you don't know about this daughter of Zion today. All that I am today is because the good Lord choose to bless me with Esther, the woman whose shoes you are not fit to even dream of wearing, your wickedness. Selfishness and covetousness landed me in prison. Thank God I met Christ and got born again in prison. This helped me to regain my self-worth, but I had a very hard time when I was released, as I could not get a job in my chosen profession of accountancy. I had to start from the scratch by washing cars for tokens. It was while working at a car wash that I met Esther. She brought her car to be washed. I later discovered she was one of the prayer warriors in the church I attended. She lived with her parents in a relatively comfortable home. The parents are middle-class civil servants. She was a young graduate who could not get a paid employment, so she decided to start a tuition center. She also held some lessons which earned her small stipends. She bought a small car using the money she got from these businesses. I would have been nothing if she had not accepted me. She stood her ground in spite of her parents' refusal to accept me because of my status as an ex-convict. 
She also refused to mind all the ridicules from friends and everyone around her, including people in the church. When we got married, she had to move out of her parents' comfortable home to the one room that I occupied. It was a hard life, very hard life. We slept on the flower as I had no bed. We used the small kerosene stove to cook. We were in this condition when she took in and started having children. Abraham later joined us at that point. With time, the tuition center grew into a full-fledged school, where we now offer classes from preschool to secondary. Esther is a true example of the virtuous woman portrayed in Proverbs chapter 31. She was sent by God to pull me out of the dungeon where you pushed me into. While you only saw me as someone to be used and tossed aside, she saw me as someone to be loved and cherished. While you look for who to bring down so that you can rise, she looks for people to raise and build up. As quiet as she is, she has helped a good number of people to start and grow various businesses. She's always happy to see others succeed. Petra, you have gone too far this time. You must face the full wrath of the law for putting my wife's life in danger. I'm going to call and report to the police so that you can face the full wrath of the law. Papa, please I'm having a rethink about reporting Mama to the police. I believe what she really needs is salvation. She needs to totally surrender her life to Jesus and make him the master of her life, please. Abraham, I think Papa is right. I'm ready to go to the police. I'm not worthy to be a child of God. For so many years I have lied and cheated, pretending to be born again whenever it suits me. For many years I've been going to church. I'm a good giver. I even paid tithes out of the money Sandra used to give me, knowing that they are from the scams that she pulled. It was easy for me to live a deceitful life because I never believed God existed, but after he spoke to me this morning, I know God exists, and he made me to understand the big punishment that lies in living my life in disobedience for the past years. I'm ready to go to the police, let me pay for the evil deeds. Even if you will not go to the police, you must sign an undertaking that you will not harm my wife. Our God is a God of second chance. The fact that God spoke to you means you are important to him. Remember how God arrested Saul, the chief persecutor of the church, and turned him to Paul apostle of his kingdom. I believe the Lord has a special assignment for Mama Petra as well. Let us just do what the Bible tells us to do, and that is to forgive her and let's leave it up to God to do with her as he wills. He says vengeance is his. He will always repay Mama Petra. It's high time you set aside everything that you thought was important and surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the only one who truly matters. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Mama, can you just go before the Lord and confess your sins to God? Tell him to forgive you of all your sins, that you're ready for him. Hello, Pastor Abraham. Hello, Pastor Brown. How are you? I'm okay, thanks to God. Your wife shared a matter with my wife. Hold it, that homebreaker, husband snatcher, daughter of Jezebel has come to beg you to beg me to forgive her? No, I won't, she successfully deceived and manipulated me to believe that my dearly beloved, legally married wife was what she was not. She made me turn my back on the mother of my children and my dear children too, she's now sending emissaries to come and beg me, no it won't work. I understand everything. No you don't Pastor Abraham, you don't. I do, because I have been there before, the only difference is that I was the one who deceived my wife, thanks to God I am back on my feet, God can bring you back on your feet too, he can fill your valley and straighten your rough path. How? Get me back on my feet when my legal wife and my children have refused to come back to me? Get me back on my feet when my Christian life and ministry are in shambles? How? With God all things are possible, the fact that the sky is dark does not mean the sun is not shining. When the thick cloud gives way, the sun will shine and beam its ray to display every stubborn darkness. I am sorry Pastor Abraham, I am not in the mood for any motivational talk. I will handle this matter my own way, I will teach Linda the lesson of her life. I will make sure she pays dearly for what she did to me. Thanks for the call, good day. Today's Chanel shout-out is to Sandra Brown, Tracy, Rochelle and Pamela from USA, Lee Blake from Jamaica, Joseph from Zambia, Chief Esther Kitchen from Ecuador, Eva from South Africa, Neville and Yvonne from Canada, Veronica from St. Vincent, Nanyan from Lesotho, 
Drop your comment, name and where you are watching from in the comment section in order to get a shout out from this channel. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to be notified when another video is being posted.